The Raiders once again hit with the injury bug, this time a big one, a big one on the defensive line. That plus a whole lot more on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. You are Locked On Raiders, your daily Las Vegas Raiders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. And as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, you know we appreciate that. The show continues to grow each and every day, and that's because of your support and because of the support of my guy, Ari, who does a fantastic job uh, behind the scenes making it do what it do and making sure we're on YouTube each and every day. We're looking good and sounding good, so we appreciate him. We shout him out. He's on Twitter, at Ari Producers. You can always hit him up. You can hit me up as well, at your boy Q254. And we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707 704-4693. And as you can imagine, lots of conversation to get to in segment number three. A lot of calls, lots of texts that we'll have on the show coming up in segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Segment number two, really want to deep dive into all the injuries that the Raiders have suffered so far, including a big one that we found out about on Tuesday, a really big one in the center of the defensive line, something that's really going to hurt this team moving forward. But that's not the only injury that they suffered. We'll talk about all of them and why potentially they're going through all these injuries, Uh, not only them, but the rest of the league. That'll come up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Here in segment number one, news and notes, as I always do, and we'll jump right into it after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. So let's go jump right into it. Off top, the biggest news and notes of the day uh, comes from Ian Rappaport as he tweeted out Tuesday afternoon. Raiders star defensive tackle Christian Wilkins is out indefinitely after undergoing surgery to repair a Jones fracture he suffered on Sunday. Wilkins, Las Vegas, big money free agent acquisition being out as a crushing blow in the middle of that defense, he'll head to IR. That's from Ian Rappaport. That was Tuesday afternoon on Twitter. And, man, that's a big blow. That's something that we had talked about. Wasn't too sure what the severity of the injury is. We saw him leave the game on Sunday right before halftime. He did not return, was ruled out pretty Quickly, we found out that it was a foot injury, but didn't know the severity of it. Again, uh, there was a lot of speculation of when the injury happened, how it happened. Some people thought that it happened when he got the sack on on uh, Bo Nix, and then the, he was in his celebration, and Adam Butler jumped on his back. Uh, the Raiders have let us know that that's not when it happened. It was actually going on the second quarter, and, and he played basically the whole quarter with it and then left right before halftime, got it looked at, and did not return. So uh, that's what we are being told, so that's what we're going to roll with. But uh, either way you look at it, Christian Wilkins being out with the Jones fracture is a big deal to the point where he has to have surgery, right? And so that is a you know an injury that has been said to be anywhere from you know six to, I guess, 10 weeks, maybe even 12 weeks of recovery time. So you do the math, and you can see – Uh, what it looks like, what the recovery time is, and the return to the field potentially in 2024. But definitely something we'll talk about quite a bit coming up in segment number two. Also on Tuesday, man, the news was coming off fast and furious starting early in the morning. I was actually on a Greeny show. I was doing Greeny on ESPN radio show uh, every Tuesday and Wednesday for sure through the Super Bowl. I'm going to do that show from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time on ESPN radio. And so eight minutes, no joke, eight minutes into the show, All of a sudden, I get a little something in my ear. A guy in my ear is like, hey, look up at the screen really quick. We have some notes for you, some breaking news. Look up, and I see a tweet from Adam Schefter. ESPN sources, Jets have fired head coach Robert Sala. And you're probably wondering, well, why are you talking about the Jets and what they're doing here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast? What does that have to do with the silver and black? Well, a couple of reasons. Why? One, the first of all, is it's five weeks. Right, five games into the season, a team that is two and three, just like the Raiders, and they're moving on from their head coach. Obviously, it's a team that's led by Aaron Rodgers, and they believe that they have a chance to go deep into the playoffs, if not go win the Super Bowl. And also, by the way, they're a team that's interested in trading for Devontae Adams, who uh, we know has told the Raiders that he prefers to play elsewhere. So Adam Schefter came on Greeny's show, and I asked him straight up, it's only been five weeks. Why are they making the move to fire Robert Sala now? They're struggling, and I think. The Jets are two and three. They're struggling. And I think anytime you get a head coach fired at this time of the year, I think it's always surprising, no matter when it is. I think if we're going to look at it, 
it's a situation where you have a team that's struggling. You've got a team that they believe, right or wrong, is very talented and good enough to win and win consistently. And if they're going to make a move, that they need to do it now. They need to get a spark going with this team. They have a Monday night game next week. They have an extra day to get ready. Um, and so I think that they felt like this was the time with the extra day, two and three, before the season slips away. And if they're going to do something, they got to do it now. And they don't want to wait until the end of the year to make this move and have it be a disappointing season. There are only so many seasons that Aaron Rodgers has left. And I think that they made decide to make the move now. So that was just the reasoning why uh, the Jets feel like to do it right now. And, you know, it's funny, uh, as I started thinking about it, as much as it was a shock to me at first when it happened, the more and more I started thinking about it, I started thinking back to the Raiders last season when Mark Davis decided to pull the trigger and uh, fire Josh B. Daniels and Dave Ziegler and move on and put Antonio Pierce and Champ Kelly in the interim there and still have nine games left. And he did it because there was still a lot of season and he didn't want to just give up on the season. So the more and more I talked about it and the more more and more me and Hembo went back and forth on it. You know, it's all said, okay, well, it, it's actually making a little bit more sense, even though, again, it's a team that's two and three. Uh, I know that they feel like they've underachieved, as Adam Schefter, you heard him say that right there, but two and three in the AFC is right in the still in the thick of things. And, oh, by the way, that's the record that the Raiders have as well. So that was one piece of news that happened uh, that could have an effect on the Raiders on uh, Tuesday. Also, we saw Monday Night Football. We saw the Chiefs defeat the New Orleans Saints, and in that game, Derek Carr went out and left the game early with an oblique injury. Well, we found out, and again, this is uh, by way of Twitter. I saw this Tuesday afternoon. Mike Garofalo and Ian Rappaport said, Sources to me and Rap Sheet, Saints quarterback Derek Carr is expected to miss multiple games with an oblique injury he suffered against the Chiefs on Monday Night Football. New Orleans has two games in the next nine days. The likelihood is Carr misses Sunday versus the Buccaneers and Thursday versus the Broncos. Uh, they even went on to double down and say that there's a good opportunity for uh, Spencer Rattler, who was a fifth-round pick in the draft, to maybe get the start over Jake Hayner, which is kind of a surprise to me since Jake Hayner went into the game on Monday following Derek Carr's leaving. But uh, they did like what they saw from Spencer Rattler in preseason so maybe he'll get his opportunity to start we'll find out that sooner rather than later but again I bring that news up because the Saints have also been identified as a team that Devontae Adams would like to play for uh, because he wants to play with a quarterback that he's familiar with Aaron Rodgers in New York with the Jets Derek Carr in New Orleans with the Saints well how much are the Saints going to be wanting to go after Devontae Adams now that Derek Carr is going to potentially miss a couple games and what about the Jets now that they don't have their head coach in Robert Sala. Here's Adam Schefter on the Devontae trade, uh, you know, following the firing of Sala and uh, obviously the card of injury, kind of where that trade stands at right now. Well, it's interesting because the two teams that I think he's got the most interest in are the Jets with Aaron Rodgers, his former quarterback, and the New Orleans Saints with Derek Carr, his former quarterback. But Derek Carr last night suffered an oblique injury that he described after the game as not good. Now, he was scheduled to have an MRI today to determine how much damage there is. But a week before, Anthony Richardson suffered an oblique injury, missed a game, could miss another, we'll see. And if he misses any time, then the Saints' season is at risk because they're already struggling right now with losses the last couple of weeks. So they need to find a way to stop that bleeding. Devontae Adams obviously would like to be in New Orleans, would like to be in New York with the Jets. There's been discussions but I think the events in New York and the events in New Orleans may have slowed down talks mm. with those two teams. And we'll see if and when they can pick up some steam because everybody does expect that Devontae Adams is going to be traded. We just don't know where and when. But right now, the Jets are going through a head coaching change. New Orleans has an injured quarterback. And we'll see how that impacts Devontae Adams going forward. So that's how you kind of tie it together. You tie it all together. What happened in New York with the Jets? What happened? Car and the Saints and the injury and how it all comes back home to the Raiders, Devontae Adams, and a potential trade. Sounds like that it's something that's still on the table. It may slow down uh, the trade a little bit. I know that he was supposed to be a guest on Kay Adams' show on, uh, on FanDuel TV up in Adams on Tuesday, and she had put out on Twitter that uh, he wasn't going to be on there. They, they uh, canceled it for the week, so a lot of speculation was, okay, he's going to get traded on Tuesday. Uh, but I don't think anyone saw the Robert Sala uh, firing happening and didn't know the extent of the Derek Carr injury. So, man, there was a lot to unpack 
on Tuesday. And then, of course, there was the news about Christian Wilkins and the severity of his injury that he suffered on Sunday. We'll talk about his injury and the rest of the injuries to the silver and black. We'll do that coming up next in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about a great sponsor here, which is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions with a B of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. As a matter of fact, you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. The best way to get in on the action in, in over 30 states is with Prize Picks, including Cali, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. And it's the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. What does that mean? Your lineup stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, don't worry about it. Prize Picks keeps your lineup alive. It's Matter of fact, it always puts its members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When your picks hit, you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes. So what do you have to do? Well, download the app today. Use the promo code Locked On NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use promo code Locked On NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. It's as simple as that. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com. Again, prizepicks.com. The promo code is Locked On NFL and run your game. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Got to get into the injury bug that is hitting the Raiders and hitting the Raiders hard. And the unfortunate part of this is, even before the season, when we were talking about this team, and even the defense in particular, if you want to just single out one side of the defense or side of the team, we said that, yeah, they have a lot of talent, but they don't have a lot of depth. And there's the difference, right? The talent is there. There's no doubt. But that's really the starters. And there's a couple of position groups that are a little bit deeper than others. At one time, the defensive line was the deepest position group that the Raiders had. And now it's just being hit after hit, after hit, after hit with injury. And it's so unfortunate. Of course, it took another hit on Tuesday. Again, when Ian Rappaport said Raiders star defensive tackle Christian Wilkins is out indefinitely after undergoing surgery to repair a Jones fracture he suffered on Sunday. Wilkins, Las Vegas, big money free agent acquisition being out as a crushing blow in the middle of that defense, he'll head to IR. But of course, he is not the only one out. There are so many players that is, are either out right now, uh, might be out for the season, are going to be on or on IR, are going to miss multiple games, have missed multiple games, or are really banged up even though they're out there playing. Think about this. Malcolm Kuntz, big high expectations for him for this season. Never got to play it down in the regular season. Is out all season long with the torn ACL. Marcus Epps, Tore his ACL just a couple games ago, so now he's out for the rest of the season. Luke Masterson, the linebacker, he's on IR right now. It was great to see Max Crosby back in the lineup on Sunday versus Denver. Uh, he got a couple sacks, and he showed what he can do, but he's not back 100%. He already missed a game this season. Uh, offensively, Zamir White, he missed last week with the groin injury, and I know that he's not producing at the level that a lot of people, including himself, expected. But again, it's another body. It's another guy that could be in the rotation at the running back position. Uh, Michael Mayer, he's out for personal reasons. D. Cam Richardson, going back to the defensive side of things. He's had a hamstring injury all season. He hasn't been active one time. I know he's a rookie and the expectations can't be high, but it's another hit to the depth, right? I mean, e even if he is a rookie, you'd still like to have him available. And unfortunately, available is what he's not. Colton Miller, if you look at, look at the offensive line, he's still trying to get healthy. He had the offseason shoulder uh, surgery, and he's still not where he needs to be. He's not at 100%. Dylan Parham sticking with the offensive line. He's got an Achilles injury, and you know he hasn't missed as much time. But at the same time, you could tell that he's not 100%. Right? You can see that he's, he's not where he needs to be. Uh, he's been rotated in and out at times. On Sunday, he was getting whooped multiple times by Denver's defensive line. And let's not get it twisted. They have a really strong defensive line, but – he was getting turned around and twisted uh, pretty easily, right, due to that. Jackson Powers Johnson, uh, Raiders rookie, second-round pick, right? How many games did he miss? I know he's back right now, but uh, that's always a concern. I don't know if you saw, but he was out there uh, with a special helmet. I just actually happened to notice that special helmet on Sunday for the first time, and uh, obviously that has to do with – Cushion history and trying to protect him uh, as well. But uh, that's tough for him to play that offensive line position, knowing the kind of collisions they have there in the trenches. But at least he's out there right now. But he, he's, you know, he was banged up, missed all the training camp and all the preseason, and now has only got a little bit of action. Sticking with the offensive line, Thayer Mumford, 
Remember, he was supposed to be the right tackle to start off. He's been dealing with a knee and ankle injury, and I can go back to training camp when he hurt his hand, and DJ Glaze, a third-round pick out of Maryland, had to come in immediately for him. And Thayer, you saw him continue to go out there and try to work and grind and get out there. Didn't want to lose his spot, but, I mean, the, the reality is he hasn't been available. And, of course, on Tuesday, we found out about Christian Wilkins and the severity of that. And, of course, we'll talk to Antonio Pierce this morning around 1140. But, you know, you look around the landscape of the league, it's not like this is just – you know, you know, just exclusive to the Raiders. Like, it's a Raiders problem. It's not. It's a. It's it's going on with all these teams and really big names in particular across the league. And, you know, Lincoln Kennedy, the great Lincoln Kennedy, joins my radio show every single Tuesday and Thursday to talk about the previous game and then preview the upcoming game. I asked him straight up about the injury bug. And this is before we knew the severity of Christian Wilkins' injury. And he had an interesting thought that he had to say about the injuries going on, not only with the Raiders, but across the league. The injury bug has been hitting the Raiders as well. Christian Wilkins yeah. leaves the game with a foot injury. That's big. I mean, he, he's been showing what his worth is yeah. at that defensive tackle position. How bad are the injuries that are starting to pile up on the Raiders? It's typical, but it's happening all around the league. If you go through team by team, you have a number of notable stars. This is what happens when you have the, 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 the current climate of the game. With the lack of playing in preseason, mm -hmm. the lack of training camp, you got to build up the calluses to, to, to play this game. You can't just walk off the street. Yeah. I know you're a good athlete, Q, but you can't just come in <laughs> and push people around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. it, it, takes time, it takes time to build your body up to that point. You know, the, know what I mean? So the, these are all part of it. We've seen this traditionally throughout the season. One of the reasons why, you know, the NFL came back and extended another game is because they know they're going to have guys who are going to, in the middle part of the season, who are going to have injuries and they're going to directly impact the teams and the people that watch the games. So I found that to be an interesting comment from Lincoln Kennedy, and it makes sense, right? And that's why I asked the questions that some might say, oh, that was a dumb question. I asked the question like that because I want to know what he thinks. You know, he's a guy that obviously has played the game at the highest level. Uh, he, he knows what it looks like, and, and he understands uh, what's going on. And when you look around the league and you do see all these big-time players that have gone down, and then you think about it, no training camp, pretty much, no preseason, pretty much, right? And all of a sudden, these guys are, are, are banged up early in the season. And I thought he brought up a great point when he said that he, you know, you, you got to get calloused. And, you know, obviously he was joking when he said, Q, you're a great athlete, but you can't get in there and start pushing folks around in football. You just can't go out there and play it. There's a reason why they ramp up. There's a reason why they have training camp. And I know that stars don't want to play in it. I know that, you know, teams are very cautious with who's out there and who's not out there. But callousing a player up to get them prepared for the upcoming season, the grind and the long haul of the season is a big deal, right? And, and I talked about it on my radio show on, on Tuesday that it's not a coincidence, in my opinion, that Josh Jacobs, the year that Josh McDaniels was still the head coach and had him actually playing in the Hall of Fame game in the preseason, which everyone looked at like, oh, man, he's on the trade block. Regardless of how anyone felt about that, including Josh Jacobs, he went out and, and led the league in rushing that year. And it wasn't just because he played in the Hall of Fame game and he got a little calloused up. He obviously had a chip on his shoulder. It was a contract year. There was a lot of elements that, that were in play. But he didn't miss no time. <laughs> right? He didn't miss any games. And you saw what happened the very next year. He missed four games at the end of the season. That's when Zamir White got an opportunity. But I do think that Lincoln, Big Lincoln's onto something when he said that, you know, you've got to have time. You've got to be out there and actually do football activities. You've got to get hit. You've got to have the pads on. And these guys are so protective of, you know, these players now. And there's a lot of good reasons for that, right? You go out there and a Christian Wilkins gets hurt in preseason because he's playing in preseason game number two or preseason game number one, and it doesn't mean anything. And he just signed a $100 million plus contract. You know, the head coach is going to be you know, raked over a coal. Why would you have him out there? Why would you have Max Crosby out there? You know what I mean? Like, you're down if you do, you're down if you don't. But again, to the point of Lincoln, I do think it makes sense. It is football. I know injuries could happen at any time. It's not exclusive to the Raiders. But man, for a team that did not have depth, they're really being tested. And obviously, that's going to hurt them moving forward. You don't know who's going to be available. You don't know who's going to be able to step up. Someone's going to have to, though. Right. With Christian Wilkins being out, there's more attention for John Jenkins. There's more attention for Adam Butler. Those guys are going to have to step up. Guys like Nesta Jade Silvera will have to be a heavier part of the rotation. Right. Guys like that are going to going to have to do something. Tyree Wilson. Right. We were calling on him when Max Crosby was out. OK, Tyree's going to have to step up, and play at a, at a higher level. Maybe a Charles Snowden emerges. Janarius Robinson. Maybe he emerged. There's guys along the roster. They have a 53 man roster for a reason. They do have depth and they do have talent. But do they have that game changer? talent that's what they're gonna have to figure out that's what they're gonna have to discover and somebody in that locker room is gonna have to say yeah i'm him i'm him 
And I don't know who that's going to be, but someone has to say, I got this. No, no, uh, no, no Christian Wilkins. No problem. No Koontz. No problem. No, you know, no Marcus Epps. No problem. Like Isaiah Palomau, I feel like he he does a really good job at that back end. Uh, we saw the communication breakdown on Sunday against Denver, so that's something he's got to work on. You know, it's more than just the physical part of it as well. It's also the communication. It's also, you know, just being on the same page with your teammates. So that takes reps as well. So uh, the Raiders, like a lot of teams in the league, are being tested really badly right now, and they're going to have to – they're going to have to just kind of weather the storm because that's what it is. Christian Wilkins, there's no guarantee that he comes back this year. He's being placed on IR. You'll, you know he'll miss at least four four games, but you know with that Jones fracture surgery that he had, the recovery time is anywhere from six to 12 weeks. Like I said, you do the math. He can easily miss the rest of the season, and that would be so unfortunate for the guy that everyone, including myself, was super fired up and excited about when the Raiders acquired him by way of free agency. Coming up in segment number three, what's on your mind? Your calls and texts, 707-654-4693. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about a couple more great sponsors here on the show, including FanDuels. And uh, I know that the Raiders are riddled with injuries, but you can just still jump into the regular season with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Uh, when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you're all of a sudden watching uh, Raiders and Steelers and you're feeling some type of way by halftime, you can jump on FanDuel.com, check out the latest stats, you can view the live play-by-play, and it's all right there on the same page where you place your bets and you can make some in-game bets right then and there. Again, FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. That's guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Again, where do you do this at? FanDuel.com. I also want to tell you about Hillsdale College. And look, time is our most precious commodity. We don't want to waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. So how can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? Maybe you can study history, economics, the great works of literature, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution. Maybe you studied those in school. Maybe you're like me and you didn't really quite understand what you were studying because maybe you weren't focused in as much as you should be. Time and technology have changed a lot of things, but they have not changed basic fundamental truths about the world and our place in it. So there's so many things that Hillsdale College offers. Matter of fact, more than 40 free. That's right, free online courses. That's right, let me say it again. They offer more than 40 free online courses. So if you wanted to study something like Constitution 101, Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, so on and so forth, you can do that. Again, more than 40 free online courses. You know my motto, if it ain't free, it ain't me. It is free. You can do it right now. Go to go to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. Hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. Hillsdale.edu slash locked on. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a call from Sid in Houston. He's calling real quick to ask a question about Devontae Adams and the teams he wants to go to. Here he is, Sid in Houston. Hey, Q, what up, bro? It's Sid out of Houston. Hey, real quick question, man. So Devontae Adams wants to trade, and I guess the two top teams are um, the Jets, with Rodgers and uh, the Saints with Carr. Here's my question. None of those teams are any closer to getting to a Super Bowl than the Raiders are. So what's the problem? All right, that's my question, man. Have a good day, dude. I'm out. Sid, thanks so much for the call. Appreciate you. And you're right about that. They're not any closer to winning than the Raiders. They're, they're just not, right? I mean, just look at their records. Two and three, two and three. Two and three, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just he wants to go somewhere, in my opinion, that he's very familiar with the quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, you know, or someone that he can win. I, to me, and I, I can't speak for Devontae, it feels like it's all about touches and targets and, and who he's familiar with and who knows how to use them the most. It, it's funny. I had John McClain on my radio show on Tuesday, and he's like, Q, I, I don't think the Jets would ever do it, but how cool would it be if they traded for Devontae Adams and sent the Raiders back Garrett Wilson? a young stud wide receiver like yeah that'd be great and you know what with Aaron Rodgers calling all the shots there in New York as he clearly is maybe they would maybe he'd say yeah that's cool we don't need Garrett Wilson we've got Devontae Adams again I don't think at all that they they would do that but man if they would I would sign up for that every day of the week and twice on Sunday see it thanks so much for the call I do appreciate you up next got a pretty lengthy text from George the Jack Tatum Raider in St. Louis he said Q 
I disagree with you when you say you missed the Oakland Coliseum. Tradition is one thing, but a baseball diamond at midfield was not only embarrassing, but borderline dangerous and stupid. That was the perfect symbol for the ineptitude of this loser franchise. You would think it might be an advantage, but team after team came in and completely dominated and humiliated our team at home. They seemed to make the most of it while we did not. I actually am disgusted with the team every year and quickly find a productive team to follow who can actually get first downs and move the damn rock. There's nothing to watch but disappointed and anguish when it's Raiders beyond week three usually. I love them, but I can't figure out why. I guess I'm kind of loyal to my childhood team. That's from George, the Jack Tatum Raider in St. Louis. George, I appreciate the text, my man. But you don't have to disagree with me on missing the Oakland Coliseum because I just said I missed the Oakland Coliseum. I didn't say you had to, right? I mean, that's the reality of it. Yes, I miss it. I'm a Bay Area dude. I have plenty of great memories at the Oakland Coliseum, and I don't know how many you did, so I, so I missed the Oakland Coliseum. I know that it wasn't a good stadium. I know that it was a dump. I know that the baseball field's not there, and that's embarrassing. I get it. But like I said the other day, it's like having an ugly kid. You can say it's an ugly kid, but no one else can, right? I mean, it's one of those things like, hey, that's my ugly kid. But don't you tell me my kid's ugly because my kid looks beautiful, right? I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. It's nothing, it's nothing to agree or disagree with about. It's just my feelings. And, and we can't disagree with my feelings on my, what I miss and what I don't miss. Like, there's nothing you can say that's going to make me say, you know what, I don't miss the Oakland Coliseum. Just like there's nothing I could say that's going to say, no, you know what, choose right. I do miss the Oakland Coliseum, too. It's, it's, that's not one of really one of those, those questions. Like, it's cool to agree or disagree with me, but that's not really one of the subjects. So I get it. Like I said, I'm a Bay Area dude through and through. I love the Coliseum. I love watching the Raiders there. I actually enjoyed the A's even more, to be honest with you. I enjoyed the A's at the Coliseum before 95 when the Raiders returned. My grandfather had season tickets there. It was fantastic. Me and my dad would go to the games. Me and my mom would go to the game. Me and my grandfather would go to the games. We love baseball. I'm a baseball fan through and through. The, the great days of back in the late 80s, right? Ricky Henderson and winning the, you know, winning the title and, you know, the, 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 the um, Battle of the Bay with the Giants and all those great times. Before the Raiders actually returned in 95, the Coliseum was fantastic. Right, I mean, It had a great view of the Oakland Hills before they put Mount Davis up. So my feelings and my missing of the Oakland Coliseum is strictly me. <laughs> right? You don't have to agree. It's cool. I respect that. There's nothing wrong with that. And it really wasn't anything to agree or disagree with. So I guess I triggered some, some feelings that I shouldn't have. But, you know, I missed the Warriors playing at Roracle. I missed the Raiders playing at the Coliseum and the A's too. I mean, it's look, my childhood, everyone played at the same spot. That's all. That, that, that's all I was referencing, man. So uh, don't don't take it too seriously. Don't don't get worked up, man. I don't I don't want you to get worked up over that one. But thank you for the text. As always, I do appreciate that. Up next, got a call from Raider Cisco. He's calling to talk about Devonte Adams and this week's game as well. Here he is, Raider Cisco. What's up, Q? It's Raider Cisco. I just want to share my thoughts for this upcoming week. I I think this Sunday is going to determine our season. Um, I'm hoping the team gets a spark with AOC now in the center. We, we definitely need we need something on offense and. From what it sounds like, we might even trade Devontae this week. So um, all the distractions, all the noise about Devontae, where he's going to go, will finally be put to rest. And uh, I feel like that will help the team. Sometimes they, especially AP, he looks distracted at times. And I think just getting rid of all that, all the news, they can just focus on football. It's going to help the team. And we need this to work, man. We need Pierce to work, you know. Uh, Red Nation loves him. We hope he's the guy. We need him to be the guy. Mark Davis can't afford to fire him, and um, I think he's still paying McDaniels. He, he can't afford to pay Pierce and then find a new coach. So we need this to work. Where I'm, hope, I'm hoping it works. Hopefully AOC brings us some magic. We can get some trade picks and put all the Devontae mess, you know, to rest, and we can just focus on football, man. Raider football, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So big week this Sunday, and uh, just win, baby. Cisco, thanks for the call. Appreciate you. And- you know, there's no guarantee that O'Connell's going to be the guy. We might find out today. We speak with Antonio Pierce at 1140 this morning Pacific time. You know, I think, as I said on Monday's show, he should probably be the guy. Minshew's played five games. You've seen what he's done, two and three, and O'Connell's come in in relief for him twice. So there's that. But he didn't really, and he being Antonio Pierce, did not have an answer on Monday. So maybe he'll have one, you know, maybe he'll have one today. Uh, Devontae could be traded this week, but now that the whole – Jets fiasco's gone on with Robert Sala getting fired and Derek Carr getting injured in New Orleans. That might slow play a little bit. Maybe he's around a couple more weeks. I'm not whole. Sh- I'm not sure. But 
you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, you just got to roll with it. Right. And, and every day it's a new saga. It's a new story. I mean, and that's why we love sports and uh, that's what we're here for. Right. You just never know. Like I could not tell you if you had told me that I would have woke up and, and got on the radio Tuesday morning. And by the time I was eight minutes into the show, the Jets head coach was fired. I'd have told you that. Yeah, that's false. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you heard that, but no, that's not happening. Well, it happened on Tuesday. So Cisco, thanks so much for the call. I do appreciate you. Got time for one more text. This one comes from Southwest Florida Raider Q. As I prep for Hurricane Milton, I had a few thoughts. Remember when you said this defense could be elite? Well, yeah, doesn't appear to be that way. Starting O'Connell wouldn't make a difference. O-line is playing bad. Makes no difference who the quarterback is. Just like Madden said, when you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Big question is, when does the seat start getting warm for AP and or Luke Getze? And for AP to allude to poor play, to lack of a quarterback is a stretch. No run game, defense is suspect, and how about all those penalties? That, to me, is lack of discipline, which falls on the coaching. Hopefully, they turn this thing around, but it's not looking good. Peace, Southwest Florida Raider. Thanks for the text. I appreciate you. And, yeah, man, prayers to everyone out there that's dealing with Milton or, you know, still dealing with the, the after effects of Helene and, you know, all those hurricanes. And, and that, that's a rough deal, man. Like, I reached out to my guy, P.E., in North Carolina because I knew North Carolina got hit. And, of course, I'm not there, so I don't know what's going on, but – uh, anyone, man, anyone that could be affected or your family could be affected by, you know, Hurricane Milton and, and, and others, you know, prayers and thoughts are definitely with you, man. That's that's more important than anything that the Silver and Black has going on. It's all about your safety and all your family's safety and making sure everyone's good and, you know, your living environment is the best that it can be. So uh, that's first and foremost. So Southwest Florida Raider, thanks so much for the text. Hopefully everything is going good uh, with you and your family and you guys are able to, you know, maintain and hold it down the best you can. As far as what you're talking about, uh, there's a lot of truth to, you know, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any. The team that the Raiders are playing this this week, I feel that way about. The Steelers, I don't think Justin Fields or Russell Wilson is a difference maker, right? Two quarterbacks, they have none. You can look at the Raiders and say the same thing. Minshew or O'Connell, you have two quarterbacks, you have none. The offensive line, to your point, hasn't been blocking very well. They haven't been doing a very good job. There is no run run game. The defense has been struggling. Now the defense takes a bigger hit. I mean, there's a lot to, to, to pull apart and say what is going on, and uh, AP has to take – some of that, right? The the penalties that they've been uh, receiving is way more than it ever was under AP. So that's that's a problem as well. I don't know if that's a result of what we talked about on Tuesday's show of guys trying to do too much, trying to do other people's jobs as, as opposed to just their own, and they're getting caught up in situations. But you're right, man. The whole thing as a as a group, as a team, as a product – all needs to be cleaned up from the top to the bottom. It needs to be cleaned up and quickly. There's plenty of football left to be played, but man, it can get away from you quick, fast, in a hurry. And right now I know for Raider Nation, it's really hard to see some light at the end of the tunnel because right now it's like every time you think that, okay, well, maybe they can overcome this, boom, here comes another gut punch. Tuesday's gut punch, Christian Wilkins uh, out indefinitely after having the surgery, the Jones, uh, the Jones fracture surgery, and he's on the IR now. It's going on IR. So that's uh, really unfortunate, but... Again, you just roll with the punches uh, the best you can. But again, man, like I said, off top, uh, really uh, all, all safety thoughts and prayers are with you and your family, man. That's the most important thing uh, out of all this stuff. So thanks so much for that. And that's all I got time for today. Uh, we'll get to a call from Mark in Chicago, uh, a text from Shamsi in Salt Lake City, Mario in San Jose, John in the South Bay, L.A. Got a lot of feedback that we still need to get to as we continue to truck through the rest of the week. Of course, we'll have, uh, you know, crossover Thursday. Uh, that means that I, I get to uh, hook up with my old buddy Chris Carter, host of Locked On Steelers. We'll compare and contrast. We'll talk all things offense and defense when it comes to the Steelers and the Raiders. And uh, how, how, how is each team going to win this game, right? The Steelers started out 3-0. and They've lost two in a row. Uh, the Raiders have been very inconsistent. Lose one, win one. Lose one, win one. Lose one. That's where they are right now is they are two and three. So that'll come up on Thursday's show as well. Always one of my favorite shows, especially Chris Carter. He's a really good dude. Look forward to that. Until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.